What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to answer some of the recent comments that have been posted on my YouTube videos. Thanks so much for checking out the video guys, I really appreciate it. My name's Luke and this is the Super Only Show. This is my little Super Only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, guys, let's dive into some of these comments. I'm going to pull up the web page. I'm going to check out what we have for recent comments. Okay, first comment here I'm seeing from about 12 hours ago. Paul, Page, uh, Paul Piera just basically gave me a thumbs up. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Really appreciate it. Okay, on the tumble generator valves, I had a comment from Yus Yuk uh, 19 hours ago. Realistically, you could disassemble the system, cut out the rod, leave enough to rotate but not protrude into the ports. For this video I was trying to do something quick and easy. The benefits that you get from removing the blades themselves is pretty much like I think going to be the majority of the benefit you get from this modification. I think it's going to be like a diminishing return for removing the rods themselves. So that's why I kind of did it. I thought it was a little bit extra effort that wasn't worth the effort but you're right removing that rod would be better and if you wanted to go for the optimal flow you definitely want to remove the blades and you'd want to remove that rod as well. So good call, I agree, 100%. Give you a thumbs up, brother. Uh, next one is on the intake manifold DIY. So this is on the video that I did where we installed the intake manifold on this EJ205 engine. Incidentally, that's not the only way to do it. Uh, in all my videos, I'm not an expert. I, I am a former UTI graduate. I've owned a couple shops. I've worked on cars for 20 years. That doesn't make me an expert. I actually don't work on cars full time. I have another profession. I'm a hydrogeologist. I'm a scientist. I spent years in research and labs doing all kinds of shit like that. So I, I've been involved in cars for 20 plus years. It's in my blood. It's in my family lineage. Uh, working on engines. I learned from my grandfather who actually used to build engines himself. But I'm no expert. Uh, I just have 20 years of experience. So take it for what it's worth. Thank you, so I appreciate the comment though. All the comments are great. These are all great, great comments. Um, okay, so on the intake manifold here, uh, corn-fed scarecrow, <laughs> nice, nice name. Uh, this video helped me when I redid my car with a rotated intake manifold. Uh, helped me figure out the route for the EVAP lines uh, because of the different equation. Thanks. Oh, rotated intake manifold, legit. I'm gonna to reply to that guy. Legit. Rotated intake manifold is something I definitely haven't done yet and I can't wait to do someday. Uh, I'm going to do it someday on this 98 with the WRX swapped engine for sure. Um, let's see. Okay, next comment on the Hot Wheels video. Okay, the Hot Wheels video, guys. I know the Hot Wheels video was random. Something different than what I normally do. Definitely Subaru related, obviously. And uh, for some of those people who are considering buying it, I thought it was a cool little unboxing video. Um, and for some of the people who maybe can't buy it or will never be able to buy it, I think it'd be cool to see the, see the little toy up close. Tripping over my words here. Samuel Ace. Awesome Subaru 22 BSTI version you have and reviewed. Congrats. Nice, brother. Thank you. Got it. He had a thumbs up from somebody else. I'll give him a heart and a thumbs up because that's awesome. Next comment. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking at a bare minimum, I try to jump on this sucker and check videos. And I can maybe get in the habit of doing that. That way I can do some real quick comment videos throughout the week, give you guys an update. I also want to start jumping over to the car and give you some midweek updates in the car and then kind of make those bigger DIY videos for the weekend release videos. I don't know about you guys, but I'm constantly working on ways to like, you know, reverse engineer what the fuck I'm doing in life and how I'm going to achieve the goals I want to achieve and, and what the stumbling blocks are, roadblocks are, you know, either it's psychological or physical or whatever it is. So I'm constantly on this perpetual path of trying to figure out how to get myself to achieve the goals in the most efficient way. And a lot of that has to do with you know, self-awareness and understanding what your weaknesses are and understanding where your blind spots are and understanding where your patterns of doing things that undermine your progress are. That was a little tangent. Be self-aware. If you really care about getting somewhere, be self-critical and self-aware of where your, where your own faults are because that's gonna help you modify things, make a change and get to that place you wanna get. Okay, <sighs> get the fuck off the soapbox, bro. Jesus Christ. Uh, 22B, Poor Man's 22B, I love that video. Um, I, I didn't even come up with the name until like really after the video when I was sitting down there making the thumbnail and I realized this is what this thing is to me. It's a Poor Man's 22B, it's exactly what it is. As a matter of fact, that's gonna be the name of the series for that car from now on. Forget the Swap 98 or the RSTI, that car is the Poor Man's 22B. And uh, that means I'm gonna probably swap out the front bumper at some point. You know, they made like a narrow 22B bumper, which is called the, I think it's the GT bumper. 
Um, shout out to iWire. I know I saw their video. A lot of you guys are probably checking it out lately. They've been up on the Hoonigans channel. I think it's the autofocus uh, series. And they actually have that six, six cylinder swapped in. The 22B is a slightly different setup uh, with the fog lights and kind of the fascia and the, kind of the design of the turn signal areas compared to the, the normal STI WX bumper for the later style and for the earlier style. Because you know, there's two style of those WX STI bumpers. You know, there was a first gen, which went up to, I think, 97. And then there was a second gen, which I think was from 98 to 2002, which came with the uplifted or the facelift front end. Uh, and that's what it has like a little more of a grill that protrudes into the bumper as well. Check it out. The US RS's all came with that second generation one because the US didn't have an RS until 98. So if you have that first generation STI bumper, it's basically a JDM or a European or Australian sourced part. Sorry, tangents. Let's go. Gordon Murray put a Grim Speed thing for the hood struts. Thank you, Gordon. Appreciate it. Um, I actually have those Grim Speed, the exact one you put up, I think. Uh, 0207 present. Well, I got them for my Forster, uh, my 04 Forester XT. And the Grimstein ones are really nice. They have that laser uh, water cut or laser cut or plasma cut, I don't know what the hell they are, but basically the brackets have the Grimsby logo cut into them. And uh, they're just really high quality parts. I really like the, the Grimsby one, but I didn't see the hood strut option on the Grimsby website. So what's up with Grimsby? You guys don't sell hood struts for first gen Imprezas for the GC bodies? What's up with that? I think they're virtually the same. Maybe I should just, Check it out, give them a call. Maybe they fit. Maybe the 02 through 07s fit the first gen Imprezas. I should check that out. Maybe that's what Gordon's trying to say here. Okay, appreciate it, Gordon. Thumbs up, give you a heart too. Um, Condenser Mike, great to see you back, brother. Stay safe. Fucking A, man. Stay safe to you too, man. It's crazy out there with this corona. I'm still on two days ago. Okay, let's wrap up two days ago and see if we can get to three days ago. On the billet dipstick video, um, shout out to Renegade Motorsports guys. If you guys didn't catch that in the video, Renegade Motorsports reached out to me, asked me if I'd do a product review. They asked me to look over the website and check out anything that was on the website. And basically I like the dipstick. I know that the Subaru dipsticks are kind of lame with the way they kind of shed that oil when you pull it out. So I really want to take a look at this dipstick. And they were down with it. Um, and I actually didn't even know that they had the powder coated red one. But, you know, uh, I sent them a picture of my engine bay. They suggested the powder coat red one, so I got it. And it's, it, like I said in the video, I think it's a great match for that intake manifold. It looks awesome. It's a really high quality part. So shout out to Renegade Motorsports. Check out Renegade Motorsports. I think they actually have a sale going on right now too. <laughs> right now. If you're watching this in the future, probably doesn't matter. But right now, it's, it's late April 2020. Renegade Motorsports got a sale going on right now. Up to 30% off on some stuff. What's the comment here from STI, no, STG2 Legacy OO or something like that. Um, have you considered any fuel mods such as a DIY parallel fuel mod, <laughs> which is ironic because yes, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I've been considering it since I've done almost all I can to my 2000, oh, my oh, uh, to, uh, to my 205 short of rebuilding it. EJ205 is what he's talking about. Uh, it's basically the two liter turbo motor. Could uh, could be good longevity mod to go along with reverse cooling mod. The factory rails seem good enough, but, but would be nice to get even fuel, even fuel flow on all cylinders. I'm stuttering. He wrote perfect grammar. I just can't fucking read right now. Okay. So basically he's saying, um, on the dipstick mod video, he's saying, should I do the fuel rails for my 98 RS? And, uh, yeah, definitely. It's a great idea. I agree with you. Um, I'm not being sarcastic, like 100%, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be doing that at some point. What I'm joking about, what I'm chuckling about is the fact that that is one of my early videos. Um, one of my very first videos I did, probably in the first 10 videos, was like a parallel fuel setup that I have for my EJ20G motor, which is from a 90, 96 JDM STI. And I still have that motor waiting to go in my legacy. I'm gonna put that in my legacy. I'm gonna do a whole series on that. Long story, it's been sitting for fucking years. But yes, I actually have a video showing how to do that DIY setup uh, on your on your Subaru. So check that out. It's old school. It's, it's way back in there. <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna do that. So good good comment. Very cool. Oh, he had another follow-up video. And sorry, I meant to saw your other video about the parallel mod on the older style manifold. This hasn't seen a wrap right up in, oh, psh, there you go. So he already knows about it. He saw both videos. Uh, duh, he knows it, obviously. Okay, sorry, bro. Uh, I didn't read your second comment before I went off on giving you a whole explanation. My bad, okay. <laughs> Um, now we're into three days ago. Okay, one comment from three days ago. Hey man, where you been? Um, Dave Park. Appreciate the question, Dave Park. I'll tell you what happened. I got an injury on my back. I've had an injury on my back. I've had two back surgeries. I've had a full fuse in my lower lumbar. So I got a fucked up back and I re-injured it. And I kind of re-injured it on work a couple years ago. 
and then it kind of got flared up and to be honest with you I was filming the videos editing the videos doing all the time and energy I was doing in editing videos kind of made my back and my neck flare up like 10 times worse and when I started doing the physical therapy and tried rehabbing it it became it became real apparent that shooting videos is like undermining everything and fucking everything up so I had to just stop right there the secondary thing that happened was that I had to study for and take my professional licensing exam for being a professional geologist in the state of California and so I spent a lot of time studying for that and I actually took the California specific PG and literally a day or two ago guys I got a letter from the board saying I passed so fucking a I passed that part but what I didn't have a chance to take was that I was supposed to take the following week that I took that California specific test I was supposed to take the fundamentals of geology portion and the practicing geology portion and that was going to be down in LA and that got canceled because of coronavirus so they canceled my fucking testing which they canceled for everybody in the state of California for all professional licenses in the state of California which is a good because I didn't want to go to one big conference room thing where they're going to have like hundreds and hundreds of people from all over California coming to one location testing for this licensing exam so I'm glad they canceled it but that means I don't get my professional license yet and I'm gonna have to take that test at a later date probably in the fall so that's the second reason I actually stopped making videos for a while because I had to put all my time and energy into that. I'm a big believer in like putting pretty much all your time and energy and diving into something and giving it 100% of your time and energy. So that's what I do with everything in life. That's what's made me successful in the things I've done. And it's a double-edged sword because what it means is that when I have to dive into something hardcore, I have to pull back on the other things that I still would like to be involved in or, or I'm still really interested in. But I'm kind of committed all in on things. I think it's good to be all in on things. It's, it's, done me, it's served me well to this point. So that's the second thing. And then to be honest with you guys, the third thing is I didn't talk about this with anybody yet. I haven't really even talked about it with my close friends all that much, but uh, I actually started thinking about long-term career options for myself. Uh, I'm a hydrogeologist, I work in consulting. I'm actually a senior project manager and I've worked as a group manager and area manager. So I've managed a lot of people. So involved in like people management stuff too, not just the technical stuff, but long story short, I work in consulting. And as you guys know, I have a passion for cars. And as some of you guys know, I actually have an automotive degree. I went to UTI back in 1999 and then had a shop for a few years and then ended up going back to college, got my BS degree in geology, worked in consulting, got my master's degree in hydrology or actually hydrologic engineering. So I have an engineering master's. Um, and then I actually went and got, started a PhD and quit and walked out on my PhD a couple years into it. So I'll tell you that whole story someday too. That's a whole long story. Nevertheless, but I digress. As you guys know, I work in consulting as a hydrogeologist, but I have a deep set passion for cars. I've always been into cars. I've been thinking long-term about where this whole industry is going, where the automotive industry is going, um, and where my career is going in consulting. And I decided if it's possible, maybe I should do a pivot. And maybe I should make a pivot into kind of an up and coming emerging automotive sector. And that is the EV market. So. I targeted one of the big up-and-comers, Lucid Motors. I did a lot of research. I basically identified the positions that I was qualified for, which is basically project managers or some program management positions. Um, and in environmental consulting, I've done a lot of work for companies uh, like Lucid. I actually have worked for Tesla and I've done some other projects for companies like them, tech companies. So I had some experience that was relevant and I think I was a good match for some of the roles. So I actually built a whole new resume around applying for a role in the EV market. I actually formally submitted my application along with a whole cover letter to Lucid Motors. I was waiting to hear from Lucid Motors and then about three weeks ago, I got a letter from them saying that they were suspending the position. They were suspending hiring for that position um, until after this stay at home order was settled. And frankly, the reality is an up and coming EV manufacturer like Lucid Motors, for those of you guys who don't know who Lucid is, like they're basically um, a high end luxury EV manufacturer and they actually make their own, they have a whole separate division that makes the lithium ion batteries. And they are one of the, I think they're the only sole supplier or they're one of the primary. I think they're actually got a contract to be the sole supplier for the electric batteries for the F1 electric cars. So they're heavily Im embedded in the motorsports arena uh, on a global level. So Lucid Motors is involved with them. And long term, that's what I was targeting. I want to go work for this company in any capacity they need me as a project manager or program manager. And then hopefully, eventually gravitate over to the division or the group that works with these F1 teams and get involved in that kind of stuff for them. So that's what I did. I applied for them. Didn't happen. And now that we're in this whole crazy thing with the coronavirus and it's potentially like a market crash happening in the near future. To be honest, it wouldn't be good to be working for Lucid Motors. It's much, much better that I work for a consulting company because consulting companies are very general and very broad, work for lots of different sectors. And even though every industry is gonna get hit hard, 
Lucid Motors, God knows what's gonna happen to them. They're about to release their first brand new vehicle in like four or five months. That was their plan, the Lucid Air. And I, I'm, I'm stoked for it. Um, I'm a believer in their brand. I'm a believer in their, in their culture. I'm a believer in the EV market in, in general. But to go work for a new manufacturer that's releasing their first car right on the cusp of global recession could just be uh, a recipe for disaster for a company. It could be, it's just terrible, terrible timing. If they could get this car out last year at this time, it would have been completely different. But the fact that they're trying to release this car during this whole situation and it's on the cusp of a global recession, I'm very glad I didn't get hired at Lucid because honestly, I'd be one of the first people cut if I had gone and worked for that company. So, okay, that's a digression. Um, Dave, that's a hell of a lot more than you asked for. Okay, at that, I'm gonna cut it right there, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. You guys know what you're watching, the Super Only channel. This is the Super Only show. My name's Luke, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Later. Thanks again for watching this video guys. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast. And I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist. And I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. In these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru related R&D or digital marketing and media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.